Hey, what's up guys? It's been such a long time. You're probably wondering where I've been. I went to go see family. I went to Nigeria and I also went to visit England. Traveling was something that I always wanted to do ever since I was 17. And now I got a chance to do it. What I didn't realize was my dreams came with some dose of reality. Some reality I really wasn't expecting to see. Let's get into it. So my trip started in Montreal. So right there we're at customs. The guy says take my laptop out of my bag and put it in a separate tray. But he says it in French and I don't really understand what he's saying. So I just put my bag in the tray and I put it through the scanning thing. My bag ends up in like another lane. That's like the inspection lane. They said something was in it that wasn't supposed to be in it. And I took the laptop out of my bag and I put it into the next tray. Went through everything was dope. I take my bag and I take the rest of my items and I leave. As I'm leaving, there's this border basically. Once you cross that border, you can't enter back into customs. I tap my boarding pass not thinking about anything. I'm walking down the aisle to my gate. I sit there, I'm chilling, you know, I got my music playing and then all of a sudden I realize, oh no, I left my laptop at customs. Now I'm like speed walking all the way down the aisle back to the place and then the guy's like, oh, hold up, where are you going? You can't cross this line. And now I'm like, no, but I forgot my my laptop in customs. I need my laptop. It doesn't help that my gate was at the end of this line, like towards the end. I was walking up and down. So I find somebody, I talked to one of the ladies that work at gate terminals that announces that the plane is and she tells me, yeah, I should go get it for me and I should go sit in my gate. So I'm sitting on my gate, I'm like, my mind is rushing like a thousand miles per hour, thinking, oh no, if I don't get this laptop back, I'm gonna have to buy a new laptop. Oh, that's $400 out of my traveling budget. This is gonna be the worst thing ever. All of a sudden, all I hear is Flight Germany is being called and also my name. I'm like, I'm not going to Germany. You're probably asking for me to go to this gate. That's where my laptop is. So I go to the gate, I'm waiting there and then all I hear is like this beep beep. If you've ever been to an airport, people travel using this mini go-kart up and down the aisles. This lady literally she like swerved next to the uh, the gate and she was like, I've been looking for you. I was like, hop in. She did like a U-turn and she spent all the way back to that international border I was talking about and passed through. She parked outside of customs and she was like, go get your stuff. So I went to get my laptop. I got it, I hopped it back into ride. I was looking at all these people traveling with their suitcases while I was getting VIP escorted with all my luggage. I felt very cool. This never happened to me before. This is number one champion sound, yeah, yeah Estelle, we about to get down. get down. Who the hottest in the world right now? Just touched down in London town. <laughs> Bet they give me a pound. Tell them put the money in my hand right now. Yes. Set up a motor, we need more seats. We just sold out all the floors. Tip number one, if you're in London, you should make sure to buy an adapter that has the three plugs. My phone was dead the whole night and I had to go find it the next day. I'm in England, finally here, I'm finally in London. Everything's dope. I went to Regent Street. Regent Street is like a popular commercial street in London. The architecture was pretty amazing to look at the way the buildings curved and like moved through the street was pretty amazing the apple store there looked like a club there was like a second floor and there was a huge screen thing the cars are smaller it kind of looks like you can like pick them up everything is very tiny even the buses they're still big but like they look small you know the buildings are also small i think it's maybe that north america influence or something everything is bigger here even in canada when i was there i was ordering like uber Eats, and i was saying okay this is 16 dollars. this is very cheap then i was like oh this is in pounds this is about 25 to 32 dollars this is expensive everything is expensive in london so i suggest you don't use uber eats and i suggest you buy groceries that was my mistake after the fact that i'm in london fades away i slowly realized that i didn't really plan ahead at all the thing is london is a very busy city and there's a lot of tourists a very international city there's a lot of people going there to do the exact same thing that you want to do so i wanted to go see the british museum that was booked out i wanted to go see the wax museum that was also booked i wanted to see some tours that was also booked if you don't have any money i suggest going to the art museum that's what i did so you don't have to pay for anything and you don't have to book anything you just walk in there and just look at cool arts i went to covenant garden i saw like a knife throwing show tip number three you should get data you should get a sim card so you can have internet roaming internet i get to nigeria and immediately i'm in a hoodie and it's hot I haven't been to Nigeria in about 10 years. I heard a lot of things about Nigeria before coming there. A lot of times I was correct and a lot of things I was wrong about. It was nice to see my mom. I hadn't seen my mom since 2017. It's been damn near five years now. Nigeria was a lot cheaper than London and the food was definitely a lot better. Coming to Nigeria was like a relief from my bank account. But Nigeria had its own set of problems. At the time I came, it was during the hot season. It was during a time where electricity across the country was inconsistent and the heat was ridiculous. I arrived in Abuja. Abuja's 
basically the government city of Nigeria. It was constantly 39 degrees and then it would go up to like 45 degrees. That coupled with the lack of electricity, there was one night where I just couldn't sleep because of the heat. The government doesn't seem to really care about its own people. Nigeria is very rich, however, because of corruption, people at the top just keep the money to themselves and they don't help the people at the bottom. I saw kids from like 6 to 12 years old outside working in the heat, selling food, selling clothes. I saw some girl working construction in like the middle of the day. So when you see something like that, it really kind of changes your perspective on what you think struggling is. Despite there being a lack of care between the rich and the poor there was still a sense of community there's still this sense of like i got you you got me and hopefully maybe one day the people at the top will share the same compassion for other people and try to make that country a better place to be in but it's nice to be back man and i'll be posting videos consistently so don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys very soon peace <laughs>